welcome back to another episode of SPL Social Guys, a show just about the personalities in the Singapore Premier League. And today, I am so honoured to be joined by two more guests, you know, two very familiar names in Singapore football. We have a man, I guess, doesn't need any introduction if you know Singapore football. We've got Mr. Noah Alam Shah Hi. with us. Welcome back to the show, um, Alam Shah. And of course, we have a former Singapore player as well, Hafiz Osman, and I believe he's also part of the coaching staff yes, with Sanjong yeah. Kagao. Welcome to, to the show, guys. Mm, yeah. And thanks for taking the time here at the Dutch Colony in Tampanese Hub to join me today. Okay guys, I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, Tanjung Pagar. I mean, following the losses against Brunei DPM, you know, what's happening, Alam Shah, with the, with the team? Ah, so, so far, it has been... It is what it is. The team is performing as what we want to perform. But I don't think the luck is there with us. We've been playing the first round without Pedro and Marin for half of it. And, but having said this also, it is an opportunity granted to the younger players at the under 21 we perform, which is one of our uh, main goals also this year, to develop for the next following year as well. Because the regeneration of Faris, uh, Blake are all at the end of their terms at this year. So I think after 2020, the four years uh, vision of the project has come to an end. And next year, is, uh, that's why we are concentrating more on the under 21 for the next progression. So you mentioned four year project, so it yeah. was actually like a long term thing that you were planning to do? Yeah, so when we come into the league with a surprise entry at that time, it was supposed to be a participation year. Ah. And then after that, it was uh, the... Uh, what we, we have foundation, to, something like foundation, foundation yeah. year, and then okay. after that the competition year. Yeah. So last year was the competition year, and this year was the regeneration year. So the regeneration year was more focused on the under 21 this year. We saw the under 21 after three matches doing pretty okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully it builds towards the end goal. But of course we want a result as well. Uh, the guys have been training fantastically, but the result doesn't care, doesn't seem to come our way. Yeah, because I was comparing it to last season during this time, Tanjo Baga were on a roll. You guys were doing so well at yeah. the beginning of last year. I mean, in fact, a lot of fans were saying, "Could this be the year Tanjo Baga wins the league?" So, what's the key difference I'm happy this year? I mean, he mentioned injuries, yeah. but for yourself, uh, I think uh, quite a new team this year. We over. Well, 60, 70 percent uh, new players, so we are trying to cope with each other. Uh, slowly getting into into the play or the new style, how we're going to play. And last year, uh, we did we, we did well at the start, but after that we stumbled for a while and then we pick up. So I think now we are slowly picking up, and we just started our round two. So slowly we're going to go up there, and, uh, try to catch up with the big teams up there. Yeah. And I'm sure all the players look up to you as well because you guys used to play. So what's the you know relationship like with all the players in, in the team? Ah, we are well known to be a family-oriented uh, yes. team. So there's no differentiate of coaches and players or even staff. Everybody is equal in terms of uh, the, the status and everything. So we understand how the players feel. Uh, we also understand how to push them when it's, when it's needed. And that is the thing that respect us and we understand how to draw the line between players and coaches at, at any point of time. So I think that is the positive flow in the team. So in, in terms of say in a, in a way that they can't trick us because we done that, been there, so we, they can't fool us. So, so we have that respect. Uh, we, have the, uh, we have that respect. The response was very good. I think we communicate really well. The communication part is really, really important. Uh, that's why I think I think we can see that our team harmony is always up there. Yeah, so that's something I think we are capable of holding on to us. Yeah. Yeah, you can't trick these guys. Huh? they've been there and done that, as you said. Okay, you know we can't have this episode without addressing the elephant in the room, guys, and it is making headlines all over Singapore football, and that is of course our elimination in the Sea Games, the Singapore national team, both the men and women, and I want to ask you guys. Alam Shah, you've been there, done that, you've played for us on the highest level, which is the AFF. You know, your thoughts on our elimination now. Um, what's happening now with Singapore football? Look, I always believe every action there's an, uh, there's a, there's an outcome and the consequences, right? So, before, we have, we have to be honest with ourselves. When the SEA Games squad goes and with the group they're going, we already know the outcome is. But I think, Having known the outcome, there is unfair for the public to treat them with this kind of consequences. I think the boys have given that all, but 
we need to be honest with ourselves that we are at the level of Laos and Cambodia. We are not at the the level of the Thais, like, even to the state, Myanmar is, is not at our level. If we are honest with ourselves, then we can move forward. And then people will understand, the public will understand not to criticize, criticize these this players. I, I, I really don't know where to start uh, with where Singapore football is wrong. Uh, I really don't have any clue. But it's not my job, it's the FA job. So they need to identify this. But let's be clear. We are not supposed to be criticizing the players. We need to support them. And we need to be honest that we are maybe even to an extent let's be be lower than Laos and then move forward. Then that must be the way. For me, for me that should be the way. We were once there before. Uh, yeah, I watched a few games of the against Thai, against the Vietnam and then the Laos. I think the boys did pretty well, did okay, but then again the Thais are up there, the Vietnams are really they are they are progressing really well. Uh, and for us, I think we are still stagnant. The boys did well, but we are still stagnant in terms of you know uh, maybe the tactical part. Yeah. So we we we, we cannot be dreaming. Or, you know we can we must be honest to ourselves that we are with the the bottom teams. Yeah, because the Thais, the Vietnam the nations are progressing really well, and we are still slowly trying to progress. And then I think. Uh, the boys need to, you know, they, they, they try their best. So it's, uh, we need to accept, like what Alung said, you know, we need to accept where we are right now. Yes, I have to correct him, you know, because on a tactical sense, I think there's a lot of good tactical coaches here. On a technical sense, I think that's the main problem. Yeah. So the technical sense, I, I, we need to understand. I never won, I never dominate ASEAN with technical. I don't mean answer with Sasha implementing fitness and tactical insight from ready. We used to talk about the late Uncle Chu, where everybody yeah. said, oh, he was, I cannot use a swear word here, but he, he used to push the players no, to an extent. So why, why are we talking about uh, tactical more or technical more when it is supposed to be the will over the skill? Yes, yeah, so I've heard about Sasha. Sasha was, of course, the former fitness coach yeah. for the national team, and he's known for drilling the players yes. with the fitness and the, you know, the strength. So, do you think the fitness plays a part? Yep, you? yeah, of course, of course, of yeah. course, yep. And after I, this is my experience after you know, four years into SPL coaching, I realized that physically we are not there. Yeah, we we can't compete. We are and, and with modern football now, I I accept that we need to do a lot of fitness actually. To, to compete with these players, with these teams actually. Yeah, we, we, uh, I think this season, uh, Alam Shah and I, we, we agreed to go more physical this season with the team and I think the team is physically... Is but not with the SPL, right? with under 21. Yeah. <laughs> with all the age group actually, with all the age group. So we are starting from the U15, 17, U21, all will be all about fitness. So I think that's where we can compete. I think we... No, I think I believe we we have turned soft. Yeah. Yeah. Turn soft. What yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. diet is it? Our no, discipline. I, I believe we have turned soft with all the current methodology, with all the nutrition, with all yeah. the the right. scientific everything. But these these things are equipped for all those high level players. We are not at that high level players. Uh, sad to say, we are at the lower level. So I think we have to seek the will, seek the passion. We need to build this, and then going forward, it will be much, much better. I really don't know whether we got the right people for the job. I is is a lot of countries everywhere in, in, in Singapore implementing uh, implementing what they want to implement. We know Vietnam got the Vietnam way, Japanese got their Japanese way, Indonesia got their Indonesia way, but Singapore got no way. That's the for me. That's the that's problem. I'm I'm sorry, but I have to say the truth here. Yeah. Yeah, which is, uh, is true, no? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After I seeing it, everything with my own eyes, uh, I, I believe. Yeah. Physically, we are not up there. Fitness wise, we are not. We are not able to compete. And then the other thing is mentally. Mentally, we are not strong enough. Yeah. How do you get mentally stronger? You know, you guys have been there. You played, but also during that time, there wasn't much social media. So now these boys are going online. Checking all the comments, and I'm sure it affects them in some way. How do you deal with so I, I, I'm not sure, but my time, how I get mentally strong is the coach asks us to run 20 rounds. 
20 rounds. 20 rounds, wow. something like that, you know. Uh, do physical work, just run, 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 and, and, and in a way, and then, and we got no reason, you know, to, to, to stop from playing yeah. football because of this hard work. Hard work, it's all about hard work, yeah. Or by drinking this cafe latte. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm also a huge fan of the cafe latte here at Dutch Colony. Thank you for the cafe latte, guys. Okay, so maybe moving forward, you know, let's talk about the improvements. And you know, you were saying you're on the level of Lao, on the level of. Yeah. No, we're not even on the level of, of Malaysia. We have done so much in the last five yeah. years to get to where they are. Asian Cup qualifiers as well. Like, what do we need to do uh, right now, moving forward? The most immediate thing that we need to do? I think you're asking the wrong person. Uh, seriously. <laughs> everybody got their opinion. Everybody yeah. got their things they will say. But for me, uh, we got to regress back. I think we got to look deep into history and look where the success has brought us and then implement the system, implement the way that has already brought us success. Not now, we are not in, we cannot trial and error anymore. I think uh, we have to do a clean slate. For me, uh, I think we have to appreciate the players more. I believe currently coaches are being paid more than the players, which is, for me, is ridiculous. Might as well the coach go and play, you know. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Maybe you can go and play for, for us. Now. Ice. I Come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying here on social media. We're all like, we need the old players back. Okay, you know, speaking, speaking of a national team, there's always been this point of controversy that I want to ask you guys about Tanjung Paga players not getting picked for the national team. Yeah. So, do you guys want to comment on that? I've always been curious, like, you know, do you guys know yeah. the reason behind it? Uh, we don't know the reason yeah. behind it, but uh, we do definitely want to talk about it. Okay. Yeah, every time, even the the, the last uh, under twenty-three. No, no, the, the last national team. I was helping them as an ambassador. I questioned them why uh, Tanjung Paga was always not. But uh, I think the reason of uh, the playing style doesn't match or whatever the reason is. I for me is unfair because I told them even if we are at the bottom for seven weeks. We will not be called up. Even when we are first at the top of the table for five to six weeks, we are not being called up. So I cannot swear, right? <laughs> so, I don't swear. It's up to it's up to them to decide. But at the end, if this is the case, that may be the re one of the reasons why we are struggling in the Oh, call up more Tanjung Baga. No, it, it's not because of Tanjung Baga. Yeah. We are we are not we don't deserve to be called up. Yeah? yeah. If if you are at the current state now. But there's no reason for us not to be called up when we are last year at the, at the top of the table for, for five, five, five weeks. So, Abdel, Abdel, this one, you know, whatever. So, it's still a question, a big question. Yeah, question mark, a very big question mark. We also don't know, we also get, we, yeah. we, we, to be honest, we are frustrated. We don't see any of our players yeah. in the squad. Okay, you know, since you guys coach and you've been coaching a lot of up and coming players as well, can you tell me which players you've been the most proudest of? in the last few seasons, whom you are happy to see grow, you know? For me, it must have been Rio. Huh? Rio. Uh, we shared a very close relationship due to the, the trainings, the individual trainings, you know. It has been a really, really uh, proud moment for, 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 for me to see him being transformed from a white player into a, a middle player. Yeah, uh, to the extent even he get an opportunity to play in Korea and then yeah, currently now he's on on ACL, no? Yeah, I heard about the ACL. Get well yeah. soon, Rio. I'm sure yeah. you watch it. Ah, he's a strong boy. He he will he, he will go past it. Yeah. yeah, but he must be one of the proudest one. For for me, I might say Fatula. I might sound biased, but I have seen him since he was what, 17, 16 years old. And then he came over to Tanya Paga and then she grew and then he matured in terms of his style of play. I think uh, he really impressed me. Not because uh, he's in Tanya Paga, but because of purely because of his football yep, and his hard work. Yep. And it's also nice to see him getting called up actually for the under-23s recently. And why? I know, I know uh, <laughs> there are some controversies as well there, but let's not talk, let's not talk about that. Okay guys. <laughs> 
Okay, I want to ask you all. Um, you know, this is this show is for the fans, and I'm we talking about the players just now a little bit. But what do the fans need to understand? You know about um, Singapore football. What you know to get behind the players? Because some of them are angry, ashamed, for example, about how we are. But but what do you have to say to the fans out there? You know, about Singapore definitely, football. Definitely, we can feel their frustration. You know, but we are we are coaches, but we are the fan of the national team as well. We do feel frustrated, but I think. Be clear, be clear of who you are. Yeah. yeah. And then, if your expectation if of is of the highest level, and then the expectation of individuals are compared to the highest, then then there must be a problem with you guys. Yeah. 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 If the if the fans capacity are always at 100 and 200. We cannot be compare ourselves to the other countries, right? Yeah. yeah. So on and off the field, there's problems. So on and off the field, but problems, there will always be solutions. So let's work together and then find the solutions together. Instead of just blabbering, blabbering, and then it won't move anywhere. I, I, I have to say something. I'm very proud of what Vietnam did. In 2004, 2005, they were caught in a big country scandal where there were briberies and everywhere. Yes. They have a clean slate. They struggle for almost a decade. But they become a powerhouse because they are honest with themselves on and off the field. So I think we have to take a lesson there and then the, the higher level people have to do this and then all the stakeholders must be one in, in support. We cannot just be, be living like this, you know. Yeah, yeah. floating and it <laughs> yeah. never ends. I feel like it's, like when it's yeah. never ending, isn't it? Like nobody wants to be stuck in this doldrum, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay guys, I know Tanjung Baga is known for your team bonding. You know, last year I saw that you all had the Hari Raya gathering and all. So, you know, what do you think is, um, you know, makes you guys special, like, you know, compared to the other teams, you know? Why is the bond so close? Okay, for me, why? I think you guys need to come over for our training and feel it for yourself. I, I, I can't, we, we can't explain the feelings or what we do. Uh, you need to explain yourself for at least a month in a session with us then you will understand why there's a bond that's why why we are all so close together and also the other i think the the topic of is we are ex players and and we understand how players react and how we're going to respond i think uh, and alam shah did really, really well to 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 control all this and then he i also learning from him which is, is is good you know how to manage the whole team i think yeah, the only way to explain is for you guys to come over to see how we do things here. Oh, so you'll come over definitely. What, what's the like the best prank that you guys have played on any? Do you guys play pranks? Ah, you know? no, I'm all this question. <laughs> no pranks. No, 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 no pranks. No, no, no. <laughs> or maybe they cannot no, they, say on the show. <laughs> the players have their own yeah. role. Yeah, but f for me, I, I'm blessed with a, a very tight family. Yeah, so that's that's where I get my strength in understanding of making people together. Even when in Tampines, when we won title in Arema with the young squad that we won, it's always the camaraderie that comes first. Yes. So, but it's all about being honest, you see. Yes. When you look at somebody and then you you worth him as what he are, not not as being paid, and then a tap on his shoulder can be make a lot of difference. So. It is really, really, I, I, I can't say much on the field, field achievement, yeah. but as an individual achievement, we see uh, oh, Akari and then become, uh, go flying now, and then we see seven players who earn their diploma over the few years. So it is beautiful to see this rather than just the, the, the sad part of football right now. Yeah, it's true because, yeah, and also I think the trust part, you know, yeah. the trust is, is important. We open to everybody, we are come with an open mind and we trust each other. So that's why I think it's very important. Yeah. In oh, that's fantastic. Today I really learned a lot from you guys, Alam Shah, as well as uh, Hafiz. Thank you so much for sharing your, I would say, wisdom. You know? I think Singapore football <laughs> needs more of you guys. So hopefully, we will see them, you know, supporting our national team one day or being an important role. Uh, Every day. We will, we will. Every day we support. Yeah. And before we go, maybe we can get a message, a quick one from each of you all to all the fans of Tanjung Paga and SPL football out there. Maybe we'll start with you guys. To all the fans of Singapore football and Tanjung Paga, at the end, we need to become collectively as one and 
don't stop uh, and giving up uh, on the goal of being a successful and dominant side in Asia. Not Asia, not Asia. It will be there one day if you trust and believe. If you never believe it, it will never happen. Okay, to all Singapore football fans uh, and Tanjung Baga fans, I appreciate all your help uh, and your support towards our football and continue to support us because without you guys, we are nothing and we we'll try our very best to please everyone who is supporting this football. Uh, together, we can become one. Wow, great words once again. Thank you so much guys for joining me today on SPL Social. And of course, for more on the SPL, follow us on Facebook and also follow me, Ash at Football Lita. And I'll see you guys next time.